And we're going to talk today about uh, hardening Docker daemon with rootless mode. My name is Andrew Shu. I'm an engineering manager at Docker, and um, we have here today, all the way from Tokyo, Akihiro Suda. Akihiro is a software engineer at NTT Corporation, Japanese-based telecommunications company. He's a maintainer of several open source container software, Mobi, BuildKit, and ContainerD. He's also a community leader of Docker Meetup in Tokyo. He's previously taken, uh, talked at several FLOSS conferences, such as uh, FOSDEM, ApacheCon, Open Source Summit. He's pretty much a serial conference talker. A little fun fact about him, his favorite animal is the, the daily penguins. You can ask him about it later. But today his topic is going to be on Docker, Docker rootless mode, of which he's an author. It allows running the entire Docker daemon and its dependencies in a non-root user on the host, so as to protect the host from malicious containers in a simple but a strong way. It's also attractive for users who cannot get pseudo access for installing Docker. Um, he'll explain how to get started with rootless mode and implementation details and planned enhancements such as LDAP integration. I'd like you all to welcome Akihiro to the stage. Thank you. Hi, uh, thanks for coming to uh, my session. Uh, I'm Akihiro Seda, a software engineer at NTT. Uh, I'm a maintainer of several open source software such as uh, Mobi, uh, Continuity, and BuildKit. I also organize uh, Docker meetups in Tokyo as a community leader. Uh, in this talk, I will uh, show uh, running a Docker daemon uh, as a user that is not the root uh, on the host, uh, so that if uh, Docker has uh, some vulnerability, uh, we can uh, protect the host uh, from attackers, uh, because a Docker daemon is uh, running a user that is different from the root and has uh, limited privileges. Uh, the rootless Docker can also uh, protect the host from uh, potential uh, misconfiguration, uh, such as uh, exposing uh, Docker socket as TCP to the internet. Uh, so uh, let's begin with the demo. Uh, so uh, my username is uh, Penguin, uh, because I love penguins. <laughs> uh, and my user ID is uh, 1004, uh, this is uh, not the root. And as this user, I'm running a Docker daemon. So you can see uh, the user penguin is running a Docker daemon. And I can execute Docker run. So let's execute a Docker run. Cheers. It works. And we can also uh, execute a container uh, with bind mounting the host file system. Uh, so in this example, I uh, mount the uh, root file system on the thrust host and execute Alpine shell. And in container, uh, the UID uh, becomes zero and my username becomes root. Uh, but this is not the real root, uh, this is just a fake root. Uh, so even I have uh, some fake root privileges, it, this is not root, so uh, let's try cat uh, host, etc uh, shadow. Uh, this fails, permission denied, uh, because I'm not real root. And also I can uh, build uh, con container images. Uh, so in this docker file, uh, we have uh, Debian the base images, and we execute uh, apt-get 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 install uh, cause. Uh, as you know, uh, apt-get uh, requires uh, root privileges, uh, but in rootless Docker uh, we can uh, use the fake root so so that uh, we can execute apt-get as unprivileged user. So Docker build t foo. And uh, I can build the image. And Docker run foo. It works. <clears throat> uh, 
and so let's back to the slide. Uh, so uh, when I refer to uh, running Docker as a non root user, uh, some of uh, you may uh, uh, come up with uh, using sudo, uh, so uh, sudo Docker, and uh, you can execute uh, Docker client as an um, unprivileged user. But actually, uh, this is running everything as a root. Uh, so the Docker daemon is running as a root, uh, container is running as a root, and actually, uh, client is also running as a root, uh, but uh, you can use sudo, so uh, you feel uh, you are running. Uh, Docker as an uh, unprivileged user, but this is not safe at all. And also there is uh, adding a user to the uh, Linux uh, group uh, named Docker, uh, so you can gain access to uh, slash bar slash run slash docker.soc. Uh, so the, uh, the, the slash bar run slash docker.soc is uh, owned by the user root and owned by the group Docker, uh, so if uh, you add the uh, user penguin to uh, the Docker do group, the penguin uh, can execute uh, Docker command. And uh, some of you may feel this is fine, <laughs> uh, but uh, this is not fine at all, uh, because uh, you can uh, bind mount the uh, host root, and uh, you can read the host file system, you can also write the host file system, and you can even execute arbitrary command on the host uh, via uh, procfs or sysfs or uh, maybe uh, dbfs. And there is also uh, docker run dash dash uh, user uh, some user ID. Uh, so you can execute uh, containers as uh, unprivileged user, uh, but uh, docker daemon uh, is still running as a root. And there's also uh, Docker D dash dash user NS dash remap. Uh, so you can uh, map, map uh, users using user namespace, and you can execute containers as unprivileged user. Uh, but the Docker daemon is uh, still running as the root. Uh, so this is also uh, vulnerable, vulnerable to uh, potential vulnerability in uh, Docker daemon. Uh, so uh, rootless Docker is uh, completely different from uh, all these stuff. So we run the uh, Docker daemon as a non-root user, and of course uh, containers, and of course clients. So uh, even if uh, rootless Docker got compromised, uh, the attacker uh, wouldn't be able to gain the root on the host. But it's important to uh, not to have a sudo uh, with uh, no password configuration, uh, because if attacker uh, can uh, gain uh, command execution on the host, uh, you can uh, gain the root privilege uh, with sudo. So it's important not to have uh, sudo on the host. Uh, but uh, there's uh, some limitations. Uh, for example, uh, you can't use uh, overlay file system unless you are using Ubuntu kernel. And also uh, there's some limitation in network performance. And also, you can't uh, use uh, TCP port numbers uh, below 1024. Uh, but actually, uh, there are uh, some workarounds I will show later. Uh, so for uh, file system, uh, we can use uh, XFS uh, instead of OpenFS. And the network performance uh, can be uh, improved by uh, installing some helper binaries. And uh, TCP port limitation can be uh, mitigated by just adding a cap net bind the service capability to some helper binary. And currently, uh, we don't have support for C group. Uh, so you can execute Docker run uh, with dash dash memory or uh, dash dash CPU, but these frogs uh, currently just ignored. And also, uh, Docker top command doesn't work uh, because Docker top uh, depends on C plus country. Uh, but in near future, uh, we can uh, support C group uh, using uh, C group 2. Uh, it's the next generation version, next generation of C group. It's currently discussed in uh, OCI, uh, Open Continuous Initiative. And uh, you can install uh, Rootless Docker under your home directory right now. Uh, you can use uh, HTTPS uh, slash slash uh, get.docker.com slash rootless. Uh, this is a shell script, uh, so you can directly pipe it into the shell. And of course, uh, you don't need uh, sudo. Uh, but there's uh, one requirement. Uh, so you need to have uh, some files named uh, slash etc slash sub uid and slash etc sub uid. Uh, these files need to uh, contain uh, your username. 
But uh, if you are using a recent Linux distribution, these files are automatically configured when you add your user account on the host. Uh, so basically, uh, you are already all set. And uh, this install installation script uh, shows uh, helpful error messages uh, if uh, slash etc slash sub UID or slash etc slash sub GRD is uh, not configured. Uh, this is thanks to uh, Toristigi and Tibor Bus as Docker Inc. And you can try uh, this installation script uh, during my session and if it, if it doesn't work, uh, you can ask me after this session. And there's also a uh, Katacoda scenario. Uh, Katacoda is a web running platform uh, that uh, you can execute a uh, Docker command in the web browser. And you can also uh, try installing rootless Docker in the web browser. Uh, so uh, start the scenario. And you can uh, just click uh, these uh, commands in the browser. Uh, so if I click uh, this line, that adds uh, some user account, but currently it doesn't work because uh, probably some uh, Wi-Fi network issue. Yeah, add some user and switch to the user and execute a uh, shell script, uh, get to docker.com slash rootless. And now uh, you have a root docker installed in your home directory. And export uh, some environment variables and start daemon. Open as a terminal. You can run uh, Docker and Docker info. And you can see uh, rootless is added to the uh, security options of the demo. And you can run containers. Right, please. Uh, so the uh, motivation of uh, rootless Docker is to the hardened containers. Actually, uh, Docker already has a lot of features for hardened containers. For example, uh, Linux namespaces for uh, isolating uh, file systems and networks and other stuff, and capabilities for uh, limiting uh, root privileges, and CCOMP for uh, imposing limitation of available system calls, and Aparma or S3 Linux for uh, limiting uh, file accesses. So uh, basically, uh, you are uh, already, uh, your content is uh, basically already secure, so you don't need to uh, worry too much. Uh, but there's no uh, software that doesn't have any vulnerability, so actually, uh, just a couple of months ago, uh, there was a serious breakout in Rancy, uh, so that affects uh, Joker and all uh, container ecosystem. Also, last year, uh, there was a couple of uh, serious vulnerability in Kubernetes, uh, so attacker can uh, gain root privileges uh, via some volumes or uh, Kubernetes uh, REST API uh, socket. And even if uh, Docker doesn't have any vulnerability, uh, user often make misconfigurations. Uh, so some researchers are uh, saying that they found uh, almost 4,000 uh, Docker hosts with uh, remote API exposed publicly uh, without TLS. So it's uh, sub substantially equal to uh, open Telenet daemon without password. So uh, rooted mode uh, itself uh, doesn't fix any vulnerabilities or misconfiguration, but uh, it can mitigate attacks. Uh, so even if uh, your host uh, got compromised, 
uh, attacker won't be able to access files uh, owned by other users. And uh, the attacker cannot modify firmware or modify kernel. Uh, this is important if the firmware or kernel uh, got compromised, uh, that result in uh, installation of malware that cannot be detected. So uh, in worst case, uh, you might need to dispose your hardware when your firmware uh, got compromised. And Rudis Docker also uh, protect uh, app spoofing thing attacks. Uh, but Rudis Docker is uh, not panacea. Uh, so if uh, Docker had a vulnerability, uh, attacker still might be able to uh, mine cryptocurrencies, uh, such as Bitcoin, or uh, they can also do springboard attack. Uh, so attacker uh, first uh, get the control of uh, your host and use your host as a springboard to attack other hosts on the internet so as to hide the attacker's uh, real IP address. So in worst case, uh, you might get arrested because uh, police would think you attacked uh, other hosts on the internet because uh, you, you are using the IP address used for attacking the host. And uh, Rudis Docker is also uh, not effective for a potential vulnerability on kernel or virtual machine or hardware. But probably uh, we can use uh, GVisor or Kata containers uh, together with uh, Rudis containers to uh, mitigate these issues. And Rudis Docker is also useful for uh, high performance computing users. Uh, because uh, high performance computing users uh, typically uh, use shared computer, so they don't have root privilege on the host. And root stroke uh, is known to uh, work with uh, NVIDIA container runtime, uh, so you can use N NVIDIA GPU devices. And probably you can use FPGA devices as well, but I haven't tested with FPGA devices at the moment. And Rudis Docker is also used for, for uh, what is called Docker in Docker. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of uh, big use cases to allow a Docker container to call Docker API. Uh, for example, first function as a service. Uh, so the function container uh, invokes other containers on some request. And it's also useful for, for uh, CI or building images. Uh, so container can execute uh, Docker build. And uh, there is two types of Docker in Docker. The first one is to uh, bind mount slash bar run slash docker.soc so that you can uh, invoke Docker API against the circuit. The second one is to uh, do Docker run dash dash privileged so as to run uh, Docker in Docker image, uh, but uh, both of them have been unsafe uh, without rootless mode, uh, because uh, if you bind mount Docker script, uh, you can mount host file system and modify the host file system. And uh, Docker run dash privilege Docker dint is also unsafe uh, because you can load kernel modules or uh, do whatever via ProcFS or CCFS or DBFS. Uh, so uh, let's look into how Rudis Docker works. Uh, so the uh, key point is to use a uh, user namespace. Uh, user namespace is a Linux kind of feature that allow uh, non root user to prevent the root. Uh, so uh, root user in user namespace can have a fake UID zero, and also create other namespaces, such as mount namespaces and network namespaces. Uh, so this looks like a real root. But this is not real root. Uh, so the, uh, this user cannot access uh, files uh, owned by other users. And also, the user cannot load kernel modules. Also, the user cannot reboot or shut down the system. Uh, so 
For example, uh, when you have UID 101 and you have uh, some file owned by this user and run bootstrucker, uh, so your UID uh, becomes zero, but on the host, the UID still remains 101, and the file is, looks like owned by zero, but this is actually owned by 101 on the host. And if uh, you look into uh, device files, such as uh, thrust tape slash SDA, or any file that is owned by the real root, uh, now the, the file looks like owned by some weird user 65534. Uh, so you can read this file. If you try to chat host slash dev slash SDA, it fails with permission denied. And there's also a concept of sub-users and subgroups. Uh, so you can put user accounts in your user account. Uh, so you can be another user account while you are user. Uh, so the primary user account is uh, used for mapping the root, a fake root, and some users are used for mapping uh, non-root users in the container. Uh, so if you have a user instruction in Docker file, or if you do a uh, Docker run dash dash user, the sub-users are uh, used. Uh, so if uh, your etc sub-UID contains a configuration like this, uh, so the primary user is 101, and sub-users start with 1000, and sub-user, the length of sub-users is uh, 64 kilo. Uh, the UID is 101 is uh, mapped to zero in the user namespace, and uh, user ID 100000 is mapped to one, and user ID uh, 165535 is now mapped to six. Five five three six. Uh, so now you have uh, 64 kilo user in user namespace. Uh, this is uh, small uh, compared to the uh, real host, which has uh, four giga IDs. But for most containers, just having 64 kilo sub users is enough. Uh, the next is uh, snapshotting. Uh, so when you do a uh, Docker run, uh, Docker daemon uh, makes uh, some copy of the image, but uh, copying a file takes time, and it also wastes disk space. Uh, so in root, root full mode, uh, so the regular Docker daemon use overlay file system to reduce extra copy. But currently, overlay file system is not available for rootless Docker. But if you're using Ubuntu kernel, uh, you can use OpenFS. But if you're using other distributions, uh, country, you can't use OpenFS. So if you, you are using X24 file system, uh, files are just copied without OpenFS. So it's slow and it also wastes the disk space. But if you're using XFS instead of X24, uh, reflink is used to deduplicate the files. This is something uh, similar to overlay FS, but it's a slow. But anyway, uh, you can save uh, disk space. And uh, network has uh, some issues. Uh, so a non root user can create network namespaces, but cannot create a virtual sent pair across the host and the network namespace. Uh, so currently, we are using uh, BP and Kit instead of virtual sent pair. VPN kit is a uh, user mode implementation of TCP IP. Uh, this is based on Mirage OS source code. And VPN kit is already used by Docker 4 Macintosh and Docker 4 Windows. And there are some practical tips to use uh, rootless Docker in your environments. Uh, so for managing service, uh, you can use system CTL, just like root for Docker, but you need to use, you need to append dash dash user to system CTL because uh, we connect to the user instance of systemd and uh, the systemd unit files in your form, not, not in slash lib slash system, 
D. So the file is uh, uh, home slash dot config slash system D slash user slash docker service. And to uh, start uh, Docker daemon on system startup, you also need to uh, enable uh, so, some uh, login CTL command, just like uh, sudo login CTL enable ringer penguin. And for file system, uh, as I already said, uh, the binary kernel doesn't support overlay FS. So I suggest using Ubuntu kernel at this moment so you can get support for overlay file system. If uh, you are not using Ubuntu, you should use XFS instead to deduplicate files. So uh, this is slow, but anyway, you can deduplicate file and save disk space. So uh, to use uh, XFS, uh, you need to uh, modify uh, Docker daemon JSON like this. And also you need to the format XS, XFS file system with MTFS XFS dash M referring equal one. And for network, uh, the default network stack is slow, but if you, you install uh, another network stack called slab for NetNS, uh, the slab put uh, get much better. Uh, so some benchmark results show that uh, if you, you use VPN kit, the throughput is limited to 500 megabps, but if you use throughput NetOS, the throughput uh, becomes 9.21 gigabps. Actually, this is uh, still slow uh, compared to uh, root for Docker, which can reach uh, 50 gigabps. But for most use cases, uh, just having 9 gigabps should be enough. Uh, so to install uh, Slurp for NetOS, uh, you need to download the source and install by configure make make install. Uh, you can also use uh, some RP packages and Debian packages, but sometimes it's outdated. So I suggest installing from source code at this moment. And also uh, you can use uh, LXT user nick. Uh, this is a helper by from LXT, uh, yet another uh, container engine project. Uh, so LXC user Nick has a set UID bit on the binary. So this binary is executed at the root or always. So this uh, potentially results in root privilege escalation if this binary has some vulnerability, but uh, you can get native performance just like root of root docker. And you need to uh, set up some file under thrust etc thrust lxc thrust lxc user net to use uh, this binary just like this. And you also need to uh, set some environment, environment variable uh, docker d underscore rootless underscore rootless kit underscore net. And you can gain the uh, native performance. And uh, for uh, listening on TCP or UTP ports uh, below 1024, uh, such as uh, port 80, uh, you need to gain CapNet bind service capability. Uh, to uh, gain this capability, you need to use uh, set cap command uh, with sudo. And you can run uh, sudo set cap for adding uh, this capability to a helper binary called rootless kit. Uh, if you do that, uh, you can uh, run uh, docker run dash p80, uh, so you can directly map uh, the port 80 of the container to the uh, port 80 on the host. And uh, there's uh, some planned work in future. Uh, probably it will be implemented in docker 1909 or maybe 2003. Uh, so we are planning to support uh, Fuse Overlay FS. Uh, this is uh, implementation of Overlay FS in user space. Uh, so you can emulate Overlay file system uh, without root or any distro. Uh, so you don't need you use Ubuntu kernel, uh, but uh, that requires a recent kernel 4.18. Uh, so Fuse Overlay FS is uh, faster than 
XFS data application, but this is slightly slower than real overlay FS because fuse overlay FS is implemented in user space. Uh, so the plan to support fuse overlay FS is that at first uh, we need to uh, modify container D to support this file system. And after that, uh, Docker will be able to use uh, container D snapshot in the next couple of months and we can support uh, this fuse overlay file system. And there is also uh, effort to uh, push Ubuntu's kernel patch to the uh, Linux kernel upstream, uh, so we can use uh, real overlay FS on any distro. But uh, unfortunately, uh, this effort is likely to take more time, probably a couple of years. And we also plan to support C group, uh, but current version uh, C group one uh, is known uh, vulnerable for rootless execution. Uh, so we are looking into uh, adopting C group two, but uh, C group two is not supported by Docker at this moment. Uh, Linux kernel and the system D already support C group two, but Rusty doesn't support C group two at this moment. So uh, Docker cannot support C group two today. Uh, but uh, there is another implementation of Rancy. Uh, it's called CRAN. Uh, so CRAN already supports C group two, but this is not standard, standardized at this moment. And uh, OCI, Open Continuous Initiative, is uh, working on bringing uh, proper support of C group two to OCI runtime speak and also Rancy. After that, uh, we can gain real support for C group two and use it with rootless mode. And currently, uh, configuration of slash etc slash sub UID and slash etc sub ZID is uh, difficult uh, for LDAP environments. Uh, so there's uh, some discussion of uh, implementing NSS module for LDAP environments. Uh, so you don't need to configure etc sub UID and etc sub GUID on each of the hosts in the network. Or another way is to uh, just uh, remove dependency of uh, sub UID file by emulating sub users uh, using a single user. Actually, uh, there is uh, experimental OCI runtime uh, that can emulate sub users uh, using ptrace and X attribute. Uh, so you don't need uh, etc sub UID and etc sub ZID. But uh, this is uh, very slow. The performance overhead is about two times, or in what came, it's more than 15 times. Uh, so probably uh, we can use SIPCOMP for accelerating uh, PTORES for emulating sub UID, but uh, we are still facing some implementation issues. And we are also looking into the uh, possibility of using uh, a new feature interested in kernel 5.0. It's called SecComp, SecComp Trap to User Space. Uh, this is a modern replacement for P2S. So it's fast, and also it doesn't interfere uh, other P2S programs. And tomorrow, uh, I also have another talk about uh, build kit. Uh, this is about uh, deploying build kit with rootless mode on Kubernetes. It's uh, tomorrow afternoon, uh, room 2020. Uh, that's all of my question. That's all of my talk. Uh, any questions? I'll bring the mic around. I am Ramesh from Sacramento City College. I don't know about others. I use a lot with the remote SSH thing. In um, our college, we have almost uh, 2,000 students. We use everything with the remote SSH of Docker Demon. I'm very thankful for you for that. Uh, about the rootless one, how far it is been for the uh, LDAP authentication that goes with the uh, Active Directory or something beyond LDAP um, for app, Apple. 
Uh, so uh, we are planning to have uh, some analysis module uh, so that uh, you don't need to uh, configure sub UID file and sub ZID file uh, on the host. And uh, currently, uh, some folks from Red Hat uh, is discussing this idea, uh, but there is no implementation at this moment. Uh, so probably it takes a couple of months, months or uh, maybe a year uh, to get this module. But after getting this module, yeah, this is uh, very easy to configure sub users with NLAP environments. Does it also include NIS? Hmm? NIS? Uh, probably. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Great talk. For listening on ports below 1024, does that only apply to publishing the port on the host, or is it also for the process inside the container? Uh, for processing inside the container, uh, you, you don't need this capability. Yeah, but if you want to uh, listen port 80 on the host, uh, you need this capability. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, yes. That's why I wore my running shoes. Thank you very much for your presentation. By the way, it's, uh, it, is this case like a, each user is going to run the, the daemon? Is that correct? Oh, uh, yeah. Or? Each user can uh, execute own daemon. Uh, so if you have multi user on the host, uh, each op, uh, user executes a different daemon. Ah, OK. Yeah, because we have uh, some situation that uh, we are submitting the jobs to another computing firm remotely. Hmm. But this way, because like a user is running a daemon on the login server side, and then it's kind of tough to like submit the job. So is there any way to like uh, running the daemon on the computing farmer side that everybody can use? Uh, so uh, you can uh, listen on uh, TCP socket, mm -hmm. so everyone can connect. But does it, does it make sense? Uh, OK, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, hi there. I'm not sure if you covered this. I think you didn't cover this, but you want to comment at all about um, how a uh, rootless mode affects bind mounts? And if you want, you can talk about bind mounts into NFS mounted file systems or other network file systems as well. Uh, yep. Actually, I haven't tried uh, bind mounting NFS file system. Yeah, but I think uh, some people uh, said uh, they uh, face some issues, but I, I haven't tried it by myself. So uh, maybe uh, you can try and uh, submit a report to github.com uh, slash mobi slash mobi. I think we have time maybe for one last question before lunch. Hi, uh, can you talk about how uh, port forwarding works between containers uh, in the various network stacks? Uh, sorry? I was curious about how port forwarding works between containers. Uh, so uh, we have a binary called uh, root rootless kit, and a rootless kit uh, enters a namespace of uh, Docker daemon, and uh, game file distribute descriptor for the socket, and uh, send box distributor to the uh, host namespace, by using uh, SCM, uh, write C message over the Unix socket. Uh, so the uh, process on the host uh, gains a distributor via Unix socket. Uh, so the port forwarding works. All right, thank you. I think that's all the time we have. And I'd like to thank Akihiro again for joining us from Tokyo and presenting. All right. Thanks. <laughs>